also consider joining membership. Please like, like, share, comment. When I when I learned about that, I was like blown away. My mind was oh. How good are you at uh, sucking? Welcome back. That was a lovely break for me. Just trying to get a ride in before uh, it rains again. Trying to get a ride in before it rains. And it's sunny, nice. We never know it rains so much. Although you see some puddles of water on the uh, curb there in the gutters. Let's see. go. So uh, while I was at the clubhouse, I was talking to uh, a couple with their young child. I think they have a few children. They, uh, they bought a house here, one of these houses, I think over there. And they're waiting for it to be built. They're building it. But uh, they decided to enroll their children into the school district here. So they have to drive from Clear Lake. If you don't know where Clear Lake is, that's about, I would say, 45 minutes south of here, southeast. And uh, so they drive 45 minutes southeast of here, and they're hanging out at the clubhouse until they have to pick up their kids, or a kid, I'm not sure. I think the lady waved at me. Did you see that? I'm sure you did. school so they're waiting they, they probably only have to wait until like maybe uh, one o'clock if it's first grade or pre-k um, if, if they're older if they're in first grade then they'll have to wait around until like 3 30 so school starts at 7 school starts at 7 oh goodness I guess they work out of the house so they can do that. That would make sense. Kids are at school, at the high school. My oldest is graduating. Anyway, so he's, uh, he's driving here every day <laughs> early in the morning, drop off his kid because I guess in September they're going to finish building, supposedly September, that's the target date. Sometimes it never is. Uh, we're still in hurricane season, but uh, you know, we we're just talking. If you want to know how long I lived here, get some intel, which brings me to like relationships. Now, I'm not an expert on relationships, I'm just giving you my opinion, my thoughts, and my experiences, but usually when somebody wants to talk to you, or if they're interested in you, it's for a few reasons, mainly for a few reasons. The most common would be, you know, they want to, they want something, right? They want information, right? That's why they're talking to you. Uh, and, uh, they're interested in making money off of you or having you support them financially. That's probably the number one reason. Think of all these people who are involved in multi-level marketing or getting commission fees for you, having you buy stuff from them and all that, or, or just anything. I mean, someone's trying to make money off of you. 
So that's the reason why somebody might be interested in talking to you. So main reason, information and we want to make money, okay? And they usually want information so they can make money off of you. So that's number one. The second, and this kind of happens quite a bit as well, male and female, doesn't matter. They want to have sex with you, all right? They want to have sex with you. That's the other reason why people come and talk to you. So, and uh, let me tell you, if I knew those things when I started my life, I would, uh, I, would, I, I don't know if I'd be in a better place, but I would be more aware and knowledgeable when I was younger. So now that I know this from my experience, the reason why people want to talk to you is to get information or make money off of you, which information kind of helps you make money, you know, or they want to have sex with you. That's why people interact with each other 99% of the time. There might be that one point or 0.001% or 1% whatever that they just, you know, want to be friendly and talk and just enjoy themselves. But other than that one one off time, most of the time they're trying to get some infill, <laughs> trying to get intel, make money, all right? Or they're trying to have sex with you. So it's one or the other most of the time. But basically that's what relationships are revolved around, those two things. And uh, once I understood that, you know, everything made sense to me. And my life made more sense and everything started falling into place for me anyway. Oh, look at this tree and the pine on this thing. All right. Whew. Looks like someone's uh, vape. Their vape mouthpiece is right here. They dropped it. They're running and vaping. So yeah, so let me, I guess in this, in this episode, I'll, I'll talk about relationships, you know, and uh, I'll, I'll talk about it in a man's perspective, a man's perspective. Maybe some of the ladies will, can get some insight and maybe some, some of you guys can, uh, maybe this is useful to you. So, as a man, your value to a, as a, as a heterosexual man anyway, your value to a female is your, your ability to produce income, mainly. It's definitely not to have sex with you. <laughs> now, most of the time it's not, that's just a secondary benefit. But for, for the man, looking towards a, a heterosexual man looking towards a female partner, the most valuable thing to, to a man is can you, uh, are you, are you good? Are you good at performing in bed? You know, or not even, you don't have to really perform in bed, you know, but can, can you, how good are you at uh, sucking, <laughs> you know? If you could be good at both of those, man, you'll you'll get married. You'll get married quick, and or possibly even make money quick, or a lot of money, or uh, you'll be you'll be secure, financially secured. So that's that's the reality of life in a, in a hetero male hetero sexual relationship. But whether you're heterosexual, homosexual, it doesn't matter. The concepts still apply, you know. Someone is... Someone in the relationship and generates the income. Oh, yeah, I love that jump. And the other person... Well, you are supporting... Are being financially supported 
And of course you want to be supportive. Whether whether you're a homemaker or or great in bed, you're you're being supportive in a different way. But the, the main the main the main way you catch a man the main way you, for a lady to catch a man is, is with sex appeal. That's all there is to it. Oh, I got a mosquito bite on my leg. Slow down, slow down. Now I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not saying just because you got a lot of money, you're gonna, you're gonna get laid all the time. You gotta have some game. But those are the basic dynamics of a relationship. Initially. Initially. That's just my opinion. Initially. But after that, as time goes on and you have children, dynamics change. Some things never change, though. You're a man. You're expected to produce income and, and be financially supportive. No matter what, that's the expectation from a woman. Even if it kills you, even if it kills you, you're expected to produce income and be financially supportive. Even if it kills you. To, to, until you die. Well, at least that's the expect expectation of my wife, anyway. But, uh... My expectation is that, well... <laughs> I don't wanna... I don't wanna die working! I don't wanna, like... Go out there and start selling crap to people so I can make money. Or, or telling people to buy this and that so I can make money. Even if you think about it, like, all the stuff in the world... Turkey vulture eating on something. Uh, all the stuff in the world, like, you know, if you think about how much a bike costs, I mean, this bike doesn't cost $1,800, $1,500, $2,000. costs half that just to make, even less for the materials. So it's even less for the materials, okay? But in order to get it moving along the uh, supply chain line, everybody's got to make their money, got to take their cut, and that adds on to the cost. That's another thing that I realized. In order to get it sold to you, there's a reason why the price is what it is. All right, somebody's got to be incentivized to get you to buy it. And once you realize that, you can now you can essentially understand what you're getting into. And you can understand the motivation of others and why they do these things or what they're doing. And once you understand that, then you kind of see through the veil, the veil of deception. And let me tell you, there a lot of people don't like intentionally try to be deceptive. Nobody intentionally tries to be deceptive. Not everybody. Only the psychopath. But people, to some degree, are deceptive. Our whole lives depends on deception. That's how you survive, actually. Deception, deceit, lies. All right. There's no way around it. That's and if you're if you're too ignorant to understand that, then you probably are getting screwed over right now. So you have to understand. Everyone has their intentions for themselves. All right, they're, they're they have a self-interest. And I've said this many times. So you have to actually 
to, to counterbalance that, all right, to make it an equal level playing field for, for you, you have to understand how to play the game. You have to understand what's being done. Why is it being done? You have to understand all that. Otherwise, you know, what would be... Otherwise, you're getting screwed over. So, that's all I'm saying. That's, that's, that's my... That's my discussion of the day. Oh, road bikers. They're enjoying their day out here. There's three of them. I'll probably be passing them up. They're taking the full lane. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna actually have to move over now. cheating and you know what <laughs> I don't care <laughs> I'm still having fun and I'm, I'm getting probably the same amount of exercise they're getting but you know if you look if you saw how they pedal they're not they're not pumping hard believe it or not uh, maybe maybe uh, maybe I am cheating a little bit but I usually try to pedal hard because I I know I'm on the electric bike and plus the motor gives me that speed to go faster than them. But anyways, no matter how fast you pedal, whether you pedal slowly or you pedal fast, believe it or not, the amount of energy you burn at a certain distance is the same if you're on a regular bike. <laughs> That's a caveat. So, but <laughs> I'm on the electric bike. I'm cheating. I'm probably... It's, it's probably true. I'm not getting as much exercise as those people on the on the regular bikes. That's probably very true because I'm using right now about 500 watts. I'm probably putting in about 700 watts of of total energy into the bike, but I'm only putting in 300 watts of energy, and so. I don't know where they're traveling, but if, if I was traveling the same distance as those road bikers, technically they would use more energy than me for the same distance. Something interesting to know. So no matter, on a regular bicycle, an electric bike is a little bit different because you can use the throttle, but on a regular bicycle, whether you pedal fast and you get there faster or you pedal slow and you get there longer, it takes you longer to get to a certain distance, no matter what, in that same distance, you're burning the same amount of energy. I think, uh, if, I think if you go faster, you actually burn a little bit more, just a little bit more, but not enough to, uh, not enough, not enough to the, to the uh, perception, disproportionate perception you, you that you have, that oh I'm burning more energy if I pedal faster. You're you're not. You're you're actually oh nets. You're actually burning the same amount of energy whether you pedal fast or you pedal slow for the same distance. When I when I learned about that, I was like blown away. My mind was oh. <laughs> so I was like oh okay. So it really doesn't matter. So now I just ride and I just enjoy myself and don't even worry about it. As long as I'm having fun, that's what matters. Right, that's what matters. Who cares what other people think? All right, I'm headed home. I'm gonna use the throttle now because I want to. All right, please like, like, share, comment. Let me know. Let me know what you all think about whether you ride fast or ride slow. It's the same amount of energy burn for the same amount of distance. Let me know what you think. 
Also, consider joining membership. Until next time, bye-bye, everybody.